Again, pretty obvious why the episode is called Family. We deal with Nick and Charlie's families. Queen Olivia Coleman has no time to be here and her double doesn't even look like her. She's a very, very, very busy woman in the industry. Charlie's always been a high achiever, but in the past few months, his grades have been slipping. Nick's mom very strategically blocked from view to hide that it isn't Olivia Coleman. Been a bit distracted, haven't you? How I've been getting the sense that you've been struggling with your coursework. Hi, I'm Fasaya Akiade. I play Mr. Ajayi in Heartstopper. I had a, a math teacher who let me sort of sit in his classroom at lunchtime because I was being bullied. And uh, which is kind of like when I read this, I was like, oh my God, it's the same thing. And I can offer that um, uh, to somebody else. It feels amazing, doesn't it? Yeah, it feels lush. Yeah, it, it feels like it's something that so many people have embraced and loved and um, something that like, I genuinely, when we made the first season, was like, I was just making this cute little show in Slough, this, this adorable little thing. Hopefully some people will watch it. And then when it came out and it was this global hit, I was like, what's going on? Um, and it's just been like a joy ever since. And I made some real friends for life, I think. Who's, who's that duff friend for life you'd say you made? Probably Nima. <laughs> Struggle. Dramatic reading. Lionfish. Very toxic. They have stingers that are deadly to the touch. There are many types of fish. Here are a variety of fish that live in the sea. I looked up picture of fish online for this page. Unicorn fish types of deep sea fish. Well, I haven't been Nick's teacher for long, but he's on track for solid grades in his GCSEs. That's good, isn't it? But I'd like to see him participate more. Isaac is reading We Are Okay by Nina Lacour, a contemporary YA LGBTQ novel about grief and friendship. Pretty ballsy move for Isaac to just read like this when his mom and teacher are trying to have a serious meeting. Also, since Isaac is not a character from the comics, this glimpse of his mom is the first and only info we've ever seen of his family, so far. We don't even know her name. The actress is uncredited as well. It be such a pleasure to have in class. This is a cameo of intimacy coordinator David Thackeray, who is also an actor. Quote from Intimacy Coordinator David Thackeray on the cameo. I was in the office with producers Zorana Piggott, Alice, Aeros, and Patrick. And they were like, oh, do you want a cameo? Do you want to be the French teacher? And I went, look, of course, but I know not a single word of French. It was so kind of them to ask, and I was so nervous as well. It's been a while since I did a bit of acting. It was really nerve-wracking because everyone was there. All of the actors were looking at me and having a laugh, but it was good fun. It was actually my birthday that day as well, so it was really sweet. Quote from Intimacy Coordinator David Thackeray about his work. My role is to open communication and transparency when working with intimate content. This is to ensure you feel comfortable and to make sure you feel like you have a voice when it comes to working in these moments. Open communication is for the whole production, so everybody understands what the scenes might include, what nudity there's going to be, etc. The root and core of my work is consent. Marking out boundaries, ensuring you have a clear understanding of what you're going to need to perform, and respecting what you're happy to show and do. I'm there to take away the mystery of how intimate scenes are shot and how you're meant to perform in these moments. It's, it feels like you, as, as an intimacy coordinator, you, you make offerings yeah. instead of decisions, right? Because it is... Yeah. It seems like it's quite a collaborative collaborative process between you and the actors. Am I right in thinking that? Yeah, it should be. Like, you know, you're there to not only make sure, obviously, there's there's comfort, there's consent, there's boundaries that are in place. Uh, you're also there to support 
the director and the writer's vision of how they picture this moment and then also listening to the actors and saying hey what do you feel comfortable here like how are you feeling about this scene you know also questioning why does this scene exist you know how does it help your character's story like move forward um or are you just filming this for for what you know know, like what is this yeah so it could be like it could be kissing it could be shower scenes bath scenes any moments of nudity it could be getting out of bed getting into bed uh, after sex it could be simulated sex simulated sexual content it could be um, a relationship between a, a young child and a family member like how does that relationship work as well you know for like a series like heart stopper season one a uh, young cast so yeah. i was kind of looking at everything <laughs> everything even because heart stopper is literally about the relationships it is about the intimacy between these these different characters so yeah. even season one i was there for like hovering over the hand because they wanted to make sure the atmosphere was right for that moment and the quality um so it was amazing like i i loved that like it was beautiful yeah. yeah it was a privilege to be part of of um so much of that job except for top grades in his gcse's right moving on no sé por qué, pero no me está entregando los deberes. Voy a hablar con él. According to Alice Osman's Tumblr blog, Chronic Introvert, this exchange in Spanish was improvised by Joseph Valderrama, who plays Julio Spring, and Irina Leoncio, who plays the Spanish teacher, as both are fluent Spanish speakers. This is a fun way to show the audience that Charlie's dad is Spanish. I'm just going to put it out there since I've seen some confusion about this. Just because Charlie's dad is Spanish and his skin tone is more tanned in the comics, it doesn't mean comic Charlie isn't white. I've seen him called Hispanic and whitewashed. While Hispanic technically can refer to any people with Spanish origins, it's mainly used by Americans to refer to Latin American people, meaning people who are descended from a mix of Spanish and or Portuguese settlers and South American indigenous people. European Spanish people are generally just white. In general, Europeans have typically categorized people more based on nationality than in terms of race. So Charlie and his dad are white, always have been. You still haven't completed your history coursework essay. If you don't finish it, then that'll be a fail grade. I know we're doing the Charlie hasn't finished his coursework plot to show that Charlie is throwing his own life aside because he's obsessed with Nick, but isn't it perfectly normal to hand in your paper the day that it's due? How many students are actually finishing their assignments weeks early or giving their teachers progress reports? I get he's concerned because Charlie's become sloppy in general, but come on! Your coursework essay. It's fine, I'll get it done. Yeah, but it's not just that, is it? I know getting your first boyfriend is very exciting, but... What? It's not Nick's fault. Nah, it's your fault for being a simp. Charlie! You've been going round each other's houses almost every day for weeks, Charlie. It's no wonder you haven't done your coursework. I've still got a few weeks to finish it. My point exactly. Like, weeks? Well, I think you and Nick need to spend some time apart. That's not fair! We are not banning you from seeing each other completely. No, it needs to be a complete ban. So, they don't have their parenting act together. She's a hard ass and he just goes with what she says even though he wouldn't be as strict. Very relatable. Until this coursework essay is handed in, Nick is not allowed around our house and you are not allowed around his. So if he just did it today, they could hang out all the time. Yet they choose to be dramatic lovers, torn apart by fate instead. I'm excited for Charlie to be more angsty. He gets a more moody this season, which was really fun to play. Come in, come in. Oh, hello. And I think the third thing that I'm really, really excited for, I probably shouldn't say something French. Um, you already said two things French. Yeah, just spending more time with Nelly. Good girl. Mom, make me one. Not if you ask like that, David. David Nelson, played by Jack Barton on the show, is Nick's dickbag older brother. He's older than Nick by four years. In the comics, he's shorter than Nick, but the show version is tall AF. David likes to cheat on his girlfriend, so that's also very fun. I am here with Jack. Jack, if you could be any character in Heartstopper, who would you be? I think I'd have to play my brother. It would be nice to not be an absolute ass.
No one happens to see me. What have you been up to since Christmas? Got a girlfriend yet? Quote from editor for episodes 2, 4, 6, and 7, Andoni Stratos. There is a connection at that moment, and it's clear she is telling Nick that he's not alone, that she's going to be there to support him. Nick is a much more isolated character in that scene. But it was this little connection, and even though there's adversity they'll always be facing, there's still a network of support around for Nick and the other characters. For me, it was always about looking for moments like that to tie everything back to the heart of the show. I'll take that as an obvious no. Stop bothering him, David. I've already an internet switch, by the way. Nick keeps his switch here. So David has already gone into Nick's room and probably seen the pictures on the wall. That would mean all the teasing about girlfriends is deliberate jabbing at what he already found out about Nick's sexuality. Just please don't tell him about Charlie. I won't, darling, don't worry. <laughs> okay, yeah, right. Thank you! It's better to be honest about your feelings in the long run. I hate being honest. I know. Imagine, you know, they're, they're kissing because of a certain pressure, and like, yeah. you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's their like messy something. teenage at school kiss. So, yeah, um, yeah, that would be interesting. Quote from articles, study up on 25 Heartstopper Season 2 Easter eggs and fun facts by Tara Bitcher and Fortudum. Bimogen coupling up with Sebastian Croft, who plays Ben, and Rhea Norwood's idea. I'm not joking. We pitched Bimogen to Alice and producer Patrick Walters, Croft said. The idea came to them during a rugby scene in season one, in which Imogen and Ben are standing next to each other. We ended up spending way longer filming that scene than anticipated. Neither of us had any idea how rugby works, so we were just like, let's create Bimogen. I'm taking full credit. Croft even wanted them to have matching necklaces. But Ben would never have gone for it, costume designer Adam D said. Why'd you never do your homework? Sahar Zahid, played by Leila Khan on the show, is a character introduced in Heart Supper Volume 3 as the fourth girl for Tara, Darcy and Elle's Paris hotel room. She plays the guitar and has a band Charlie sort of joins later. Well, Alice actually asked me, she said, right, how do you imagine Sahar being? And I was like, oh, well, I would kind of imagine her being in like a big family with like loads of younger siblings, maybe like three or four brothers and sisters. So I, I can imagine her being the older one because she's quite independent. She's independent, but she can like be relied upon, Sahar. So I think that's where she probably gets it from. And I think her mum and dad are both like really i can't remember what we discussed i think i said they might be like doctors or something you know like something and that's why she kind of gets her creative side from because she veers off from what she's used to um but nothing like set in stone and obviously it's alice alice's character but that kind of helped get me get me into like the mood of sahar and figure out who she was her independence is something i definitely resonate with makeup in the morning and makeup in the afternoon are like one of my favourite times of the day because you get in and you chill and you just get to lay there and sit there and like let the lovely Erin, I had Erin do my face a lot on my hair last season and I had um, a lovely lady called Sophie as well and they would just look after me so nicely but yeah so Deandra the makeup designer she I come in and my hair hadn't been cut I, I'm like a proper tomboy I've always been a tomboy which is like kind of like a tramp again, just tracksuits and trainers all the time, don't really cut my hair, don't really brush it, don't do anything, hair's always up. So I, w I went in for a makeup test, a hair and makeup test with Deandra. I had these, those framing bits, but they had grown out a lot, so she like trimmed them up and made them look presentable, trimmed my hair. I think she took like this, this much of my hair off, and my hair was still really long. <laughs> she, I looked on the floor and I was like, oh god, I don't, I'd, there was still loads left. I love the different ways they do my hair because um, like in my own life, I, all I do is brush it or put it in a ponytail. So it's fun to like go on to set and let them 
like do really cool stuff and this season we'll see some cool hairstyles hopefully. L fitting in with the Higgs girls. Next pick is of one Higgs girl, not that one. I didn't know where to put her pick, but it's fun to see people's selfies in costume. Ow! Have you heard? Year 11 prom is happening. Oh my god! Prom! I'm so excited! <laughs> there was no prom in the comics, so all the prom stuff is completely original to the show. You could totally wear a suit, you look amazing. You mean we can't be Fiona and Shrek? <laughs> it's prom, not Halloween. Hey, are you guys talking about the prom? Oh, so Miss Greenwood's put me in charge of organising it. Yeah, I think Sahar is probably quite an academic student. She's probably a lot better than I was at school. I mean, I was good in the subjects that I wanted to be good at. <laughs> um, but Sahar, I think she's an all-rounder. I think she's, she's kind of one of those annoying students that are good at, effortlessly good at everything, um, <laughs> which, I was never. Um, that's probably why like teachers go to her to organise things like the prom. Yeah, probably definitely academic and she probably did even better in those kind of creative subjects like music and I think she's probably a history gal as well. And I'm kind of looking for some help. I'm really excited but I don't think I can do this alone. I didn't really feel any pressure about how Sahar would fit in because, you know, Alice writes the script so well and it all kind of is so smooth and everything. There was a lot of stress on me whether I, I, I would fit in the group because I was so nervous. But for Sahar, I didn't really feel that. I, I She kind of just... Yeah, she kind of just melts right in like butter, you know what I mean? So there's a scene in episode two where Sahar asks Tara for help with the prom and the original um line was i know we don't really talk that much but would you mind helping me or something along those lines and we actually changed it uh well alice changed it but um so i can i i, I imagine that like they'd gone to the same schools but they hadn't really mixed in until this year they kind of got really close but i i imagine they were in the same classes and things like that yeah Personally, I think that prom should be pirate themed. <laughs> <laughs> no, Sahar's already decided that we're doing a classic prom theme. But if I could bring a sword to prom, I'm totally up for it. She's a sword bisexual. I googled it and there are t-shirts of that on Redbubble. <laughs> there is a boy, but Elle told us she wanted to get over it. He's my best friend and... Maybe like paint over him, we take Elle paint over him instead of focus. Paint is not free. Neither are artists. Darcy, get it together. Nick Nelson. Get it? Cause he's jelly. I told Mr. Freak I borrowed your pen and needed to give it back. You can buy the iconic Nick Nelson fountain pen for yourself if you want. It's called the Kueko Perkeo fountain pen in jungle green. Okay. All of these guys are definitely listening in on your conversation. I just haven't seen you all day, so I wanted to say hi. Are you okay with your brother and everything? Once again, Charlie, you are so loud in this quiet, echoey space. Jeez. Yeah, just... Uh... Stay in social hour, boys. I wonder if Nick told Charlie he was sitting next to Ben in study hall. It seems like the kind of thing he might keep to himself to spare Charlie's feelings. I see he's still as desperate as ever says the guy who kept texting him after he said he doesn't want to meet up anymore. Keep staring at him all the time. Will keep texting him and trying to talk to him throughout the season. Later also takes a train to a far off location just to talk to him after being repeatedly ignored. I hate you because you literally assaulted him. <clears throat> I 
It's kind of an interesting juxtaposition that they're talking about such serious adult things and then get treated like children for it. I don't particularly care if you fail your maths GCSE on Monday, but I ain't gonna let you disrupt everyone else's study time. Fix up, man. Now I've started saying that. Nima's portrayal of Mr. Farouk is pretty different to how he is in the comics. I get that some people don't like it, but I appreciate how he doesn't talk like an Alice Oseman character would typically. It gives the cast a bit more diversity in a way that makes it seem less like one person wrote them all. Which they did, of course. That was just a misunderstanding. Don't touch me. God, what's your problem? I'm trying to be nice. I said I don't want to meet up with you anymore. You hurt him, and who knows if you do the same with Imogen? Do you even like her? Sorry, am I not allowed to like girls as well as boys? That stumps Nick because of course that isn't the issue here, but there's another similarity between himself and Ben and of course he doesn't feel like he can comment on that because that would be beyond hypocritical if that was what he thought. Does Charlie know you don't want to come out? I do want to come out. Right. I'll believe that when I see it. And we'll come back to how stupid and hilarious his comment is when he does eventually see it in episode 8. Because he did leave an Instagram comment on the post. For some reason. Charlie thinks you're this perfect boyfriend, but you are just the same as me. And that hits where it really hurts, because that is clearly very specifically Nick's main fear in his relationship with Charlie, and he's still sometimes questioning whether he's like Ben. Quote from article, Ben won't be back for Heartstopper Season 3, Here's Why, by Ariana Romero for To Doom. For Alice Oseman, Ben exists as a parallel to Nick, an anti-Nick. Both boys are coming to terms with their queerness, as Osman said, but approach the journey in a very different manner. Ben takes a much darker and more toxic path, and Nick's confrontations with Ben fuel Nick's anxieties about remaining in the closet. Can you get out? I'm trying to study. Charlie, who is Charlie? Give it back. Can you is give Charlie it back? Apparently, Charlie was the 149th most popular girl name in the UK in 2007, which is Netflix Charlie's birth year. So not totally weird that David would think he was a girl with the heart emoji message. It's still slightly rare. Imogen was number 33 that year, and lots of people outside the UK reacting to Heartstopper had never heard it before. I only knew of Imogen Heap, but have probably seen a girl called Charlie somewhere. It's also a nickname for Charlotte, so there's that. If you do have a girlfriend, I, I want to know about it. She needs my approval. Charlie, just do the freaking essay. But also, yeah, fuck that. Go to the park. This scene is so cute. Charlie! Everything set in the fictional Kent town of Truham, I mistakenly said the town is unnamed before, it's actually just called Truham, is filmed in Slough in Berkshire. The park in question is Burnham Village Park. Again, I must stress, even if you know filming locations, please do not go there to watch and take pictures while they are filming the show. They don't want you there. Let them just do their job in peace. <laughs> Apparently the park date was filmed on the very first day of the season 2 shoot and there were fans filming everything and taking pictures, making Alice very stressed that they were going to spoil the whole scene on the first day. Kind of hilariously, this was the only thing that was leaked. While filming season 3, Alice stated in a Tumblr comment that the leaks are inevitable and they've accepted that and are less stressed about it. People screenshotted this and took it as permission to spread the leaks for season 3. I would still like to point out, production has strict plans for what they want to release pre-season, so I definitely think it's disrespectful to post spoilers. Your hands are so cold. I'm always cold. Well, in that case... Thank you. There we go. <laughs> Nick giggling looking at Charlie's hair as he slips on his hoodie makes me think of I'm stealing this, just so you know. Oh I know. Quote from costume designer Adam D. 
In season one, sometimes Nick and Charlie may be dressing to impress each other, like at the party or at the cinema. In the second season, they're more relaxed with each other, and the form and fit of their clothes doesn't have to be so tight anymore. They're just really comfortable around each other, and they hug a lot. I think Charlie's clothes have been a bit of a comfort blanket for him. All of his knitwear is in some way his armor, and Nick is almost like this big visual hug. The hoodies he wears are actually like a hug, and so when Charlie steals his clothes, it's like he's carrying Nick around with him. Also, Nick has a freer way of dressing now. In the first season, he was more fussed about what the lads might think of him. The audio doesn't quite match the video in this next clip. You okay? Just stressed about GCSEs. I'm definitely gonna fail maths on Monday. <laughs> Want me to help you revise? We can go for your notes together. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you okay? There's been some confusion over Nick's blue hoodies because he has three so far that are very similar. This is not the one Charlie wears in Season 1 Episode 2, and neither is the one Charlie wears in Season 2 Episode 8. This shoe picture is familiar. The jeans aren't cuffed, so it probably wasn't taken on the same day as the early precast announcement teaser photo, but it's definitely referencing it, slash the volume 1 back cover. Some fan, no idea who, was briefly accidentally accepted to follow Nick's private Instagram account and posted screenshots of four pictures on it. This was one of them. This one is just a photoshopped picture of Kit Connor with his own dog. You can find the original just by googling Kit Connor dog. This was also in the screenshot leaks. We never saw these two from the screenshot leaks on the show. It seems all the leaked Insta pictures were taken while filming season one. We'll call it I think you love him. He also used the good old Nelly cover back in volume one of the comics. The art college scenes were filmed in the University of Creative Arts in Farnham, Surrey. You can take a virtual tour of the campus here. and then we can start the tour. So just spread round, have a look at the art. Kira the tour guide is played by Zoe Molyneux. I thought she was a teacher, but it seems like she's just an older student giving the tour. So first up is hair and makeup, which I love this part of the morning. I just find it really relaxing. And Deandra is amazing. She knew exactly what to do with my curls, more than I did. Um, introduced me to loads of new products, which was good. Um, yeah, and just got my makeup looking fabulous, which I will share later on in the video. Then it's back to my trailer to get my costume on, which we had um, chosen earlier on in the week. I met with wardrobe and we went through loads of different options, which was so much fun. 
looking at all the different costumes they've got, trying them on with different shoes, different shirts. Um, but yeah, we settled on this one and it was really comfy. I'm just, oh, I love this one so much. So this was my first episode outfit. And everybody gets a warm coat. Um, oh my gosh, this was literally the comfiest coat of my life. We were filming in like October, November, so it was pretty cold, but this coat was just my life. And this is just me loving life because I am in dungarees and they're amazing. Me and Belle, Team Lambert in our trailer. I bet they throw really good parties here. Felix Britton is one of the two completely new characters added for season 2 and we know even less about them than about Naomi, whom we'll talk about after. They are played by Ash Self, who goes by he, him, and like Felix, who uses they, them pronouns. Uh, so, I, yeah, I didn't know much. They sent they sent uh, that Felix was kind of, you know, a bit of a party goer, sort of really wanted to get into art college because art college is where the fun is at, you know. Yeah, in terms of backstory, I you know, I knew the character was non-binary. Um, and you know like i said like a, a party goer and i think described in the breakdown i was given as as really kind and that was kind of all i knew i i was pr I'm, I'm fairly sure felix wasn't written as disabled because i was one of the only disabled people in the casting um room uh so that was exciting but most of the conversations around uh me being a wheelchair user were kind of logistic like logistic conversations in terms of uh, getting on set, like what I needed, uh, what I could eat, stuff like that. And then some conversations with costume about I use little clips for my feeding tube to clip it to my top. And some of those have like characters on them. And obviously those are the copyright problems. So yeah, there weren't huge conversations around Felix's disability kind of coming into the story, which almost kind of was nice. I think it wasn't like... Ah, we have a disabled actor. Quick, make a, you know, like an EastEnders episode out of it. Um, it was sort of like, ah, oh, you're here, slay. You know, it was cool. They're, they're I mean, they're sixteen because they're, they're going from school to college, so they would have just done, I guess, GCSEs. Um, and obviously, I know from experience that being openly trans in school is very difficult. So I also imagine that their eagerness to go to to art college was kind of pushed by that like oh if it's an arty environment it's going to be a more accepting environment and an easier environment to exist in if that makes sense ignore felix they didn't want to go here for the parties <laughs> they do throw really good parties here just so you know yeah it just felt nice and a lot of the supporting artists they had got in for those bits were also trans um my friend phoenix plays um the the older student who kind of turns around and has a little or chat with Felix, which was a nice surprise. I had no idea he was doing that. See, I knew it. It's an art school thing. So my audition piece was, uh, part of it was a scripted bit, and then the second bit was an improv about, uh, like a kind of a video application for the art school, kind of talking about what art they like. And I think I went with like them kind of saying, you know, I really love art, but I'm not interested in artists because they're all, you know, like, dead old white guys like I don't care what they have to say really but yeah I think I really like to imagine I can't actually remember what the painting's called it's it's the Roman version of the myth of Zeus being eaten by his dad <laughs> I really like that painting even though it's kind of horrible but I kind of like to imagine Felix is like this is gnarly like kind of really likes that sort of really weird kind of you know Classic, like classical art, but really odd. I'm Naomi, by the way. Naomi Russell is the other new character made for the TV show as a supporting character for Elle. She is played by Belle Priestley. Quote from Belle Priestley. Naomi is what I wish I was like in school. She's a really cool, confident, talented trans girl, and she's kind of like my alter ego. I think she'll be a great influence on Elle, and I'm excited to see where their friendship goes. It's nice seeing two trans girls being friends on screen and exploring the world together. I play a girl called Naomi. She is 16, she's a trans girl. And yeah, I think that like, she's a new friend of a girl called Elle in the show. And I think like, yeah, it's just, I'm so excited for everyone to see it. Like season two is gonna be great. 
and this is Felix. Hey. Yeah, I love all their jumpers. Um, my favourite one was the one, it's the brown one with the kind of bits that are hanging off it, like the coloured sort of bits of wool. Which I'm so intent on stealing at some point. <laughs> Yeah, their, their style kind of like my... I had a chat with Costume before we started. Um, and also by this point, I hadn't had top surgery yet. So I kind of wanted something baggier on top. So yeah, I, you know, similar in terms of we wear baggy stuff, but much more kind of out there. I kind of wish I wish I dressed more like Felix. It wasn't the first thing we filmed. I don't think it was the last thing we filmed. Yeah, it was a fun day. Um, and... You know, me and Bell and also uh, Yaz had had time to get to know each other. So I feel like we were more comfortable kind of mucking about, not mucking about, professionally mucking about uh, on camera together. They're both so lovely. Bell was a bit more anxious, I think, going into it because she'd not really done the acting before. Not that I had done much more, to be fair. A big TV set is quite a stressful environments going to the first time so both of us going it together was really lovely and you know we stay in touch a lot um and Yaz is also very very lovely they're both really giving and you know in scenes where it's kind of not so scripted and you're just sort of chatting it's very very easy to chat to them there wasn't any awkward like you know fumbling over words or anything from their relationship I don't know if it feels like they met at school we didn't really chat about me and me and Bell had met for 10 minutes before we started, you know, shooting. And so we, we didn't really chat about it. But I feel like from the relationship they have, I feel like it's kind of like they met at some kind of event, maybe like, yeah, maybe like an art event or some kind of like trans group um, away from school because they have that kind of, oh, we're going to be friends for a long time, kind of not restricted by when school starts and ends, if that, yeah. I just... I hate being at a regular school. Like everyone knowing you as the trans girl. Here I could just be Naomi. Do you know what I mean? I think it's great. I think it's like, parts were great at breaking boundaries. I just think like, they're just doing a better and better as they go along. I think it's really good. Yeah, massively. And um, it's really exciting to have a trans mask character join as well. I think yeah. it'd be exciting for people to see, hopefully. It's such a nice change. I feel like sometimes I read scripts for trans characters and they're like miserable um, and to focus so much on like just the joy of that that can come with being trans in the community is so yeah it's so refreshing. I feel like it's such a positive show and like they really show that through the representation I just think it's yeah it's nice that you know I never had a trans girl to look up to and I think there's so many trans girls to look up to in this show and yeah, it's all positive, it's all joy, and it's just, it's so nice to see. When we grew up, mm. like, because we're similar ages, like, there wasn't really any, no one really talked about it at school. I didn't even know what trans was until I was sort of 13, 14, because it's not talked about. So I think for such a big show to talk about stuff that is so openly, I just think it's, like, what we need. I think yeah. it's, it, I'm surprised it's taken this long, but, like, it's incredible. I think a lot of the demonization of trans people at the moment, I think yeah. seeing just trans teenagers do normal teenage stuff is so yeah just have fun i think it's what people need at the moment hopefully it'll help a few trans kids out yeah. i do think for sure um trans people have a tendency to are uh, like drawn together um i guess it's like a safety and numbers thing and also kind of like when you share experiences with someone that are quite specific you it's easier to bond with them you don't have to explain so much stuff to people um, so I do think that's a part of it and I think especially Elle coming from the school where they're you know she's the only trans girl and she's moved from the boys school so it's kind of diff been difficult for her um, I think I think especially with Elle and Naomi kind of being like oh you're a trans girl too and then Felix was like and I am here to cause chaos and drag you to parties <laughs> yeah I really do Quote from Belle Priestley. There's a really nice scene where we started talking about being trans and relating to each other. We know each other from back in the day, and these are conversations we've been having just the two of us for years. To film that scene together, knowing it's the first time in the UK where two trans girls have come together, was so emotional. It was such a full circle moment. 
I've seen many reactions to this along the lines of wow you're just immediately best friends but I think it's just the thing where they have this immediate understanding of each other because of their shared trans girl experience that other people just won't get. I really liked um, a scene I have of Yaz. Um, it's just a really beautiful like friendship scene. And I think it's like... I see, the only scene I'm not in. Yeah, it's... <laughs> no, it's just a really, like it's a beautiful, it's like two trans girls coming together and relating and it's just really, really nice. Tao is somehow already following Naomi. I know it's because these accounts used for filming are private, but it makes no sense in the story. Alice had previously stated that Tao speaks Mandarin at home, but it's a good thing this was changed to Tao's mom speaking Cantonese because Tao Shu is a Hong Kong name. People in Hong Kong speak Cantonese, not Mandarin. Because Tao Su is a Hong Kongese name. I was trying to find a source about the Mandarin thing and only randomly found a screenshot of this answer to an old Heartstopper Q&A I remember seeing previously. However, when I look up the 2018 Heartstopper Q&A, the only one before Charlie finds out about Nick's French skills, it's not there on Tapas or Tumblr. The only Q&A on Webtoons is 2020. It seems Alice may have removed this specific answer due to criticism about it not making sense Tao would speak Mandarin if he's got heritage in Hong Kong, not mainland China. Some people were mad about it. Also, apparently the character in the speech bubble means is, not yes, so that may also have bothered Alice if she found out afterwards that it was wrong. I mean no disrespect to Alice including this. I saw comments about it on the Q&A 2018 post so it definitely used to be there. It's just the only source I could find about Tao speaking Mandarin and I do remember noticing myself that Hong Kong and Mandarin don't match because I've watched many Hong Kong movies and they're always in Cantonese. She made a mistake and is clearly correcting it for the TV show. Also there's no clear word for yes in Mandarin so she just got a mistranslation as well. She's only one person doing the comics whereas with the show there's a team of people to help her. Feel any way you want about it. Accurate representation does matter. Will Girl speaks Mandarin, but apparently not super fluently. Uh, my mom's Chinese and my dad's English, and we grew up kind of in both cultures, in Chinese culture and also English culture. But my mom's Chinese, and she kind of grew up speaking to me in Chinese, so I kind of have a vocabulary. Mostly when she was angry at me, just like when, when she was getting annoyed, it would be in Chinese. So I know a lot of like, Rude and naughty words in Chinese. Bendan! Ben Means silly egg. Ben My mum used to call me a Bendan a lot of the time. Oh, it's that L. Oh, she's so pretty. Tao's mum is such an L fan. It's kind of hilarious. And cute, obviously. Oh, she's applying for art college. Yeah, for sixth form. So she might be moving away. I don't know, maybe. Kiss, 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 kiss. Nicholas, how are you feeling about maths this morning? Because I still don't get quadratic equations, so I'm probably going to fail. Imogen, why are you dating Ben? Why are you starting this on the morning of maths, my dude? Do not make this day any worse for both of you. What do you mean? It's Dick. He's he's done some really bad stuff. What? What did he do? I can't tell you. That is a pretty tough moral quandary, because at what point does your friend's potential safety outweigh the principle to not out anyone? I've known him since primary school. He's basically one of my oldest friends. Yeah, but... And you know what? I don't actually have that many friends. Who are these people, then? But I get that there's a difference between people you hang out with and actual true friends. But Ben is one of the few people who actually likes me. Mmm, debatable. And he's been lovely to me. So whatever happened in the past, he's nicer now. Mmm, debatable. debatable. And I really like him. Images. Good luck in the exam. <laughs> Ben's looking a bit smug, like he won this round. Your exam starts now! GCSE stands for General Certificate of Secondary Education. The GCSEs are the big exams Brits take at the end of year 11 before moving on to sixth form or college for the next two grades. The final exams for sixth form are the A-levels.
I know he's distracted and stressed and I'm not diagnosing him or anything, but man did I feel like my dyscalculia was represented so damn accurately in this scene. It's a nightmare opening the test not knowing how to answer anything. And every time you count you get a different result. This is what taking tests is like for so many of us. You snuck out again? I'm here to cheer you up after your terrible exam. Shoes indoors again? Is the UK some different brand of Europe or what? I have since seen this map about this, so apparently we are different breeds after all. Hashtag Brexit, I guess. I think it's too short. Mum? No, it's not. I feel like I can see so clearly that Elle's style has been influenced a lot by Yasmin Finney's own personal style. Yasmin is much more comfortable in skin tight and revealing clothes than Comic L, but Netflix L is now also showing that confidence as she finds her own way in the world. Quote from costume designer Adam D. Her mum's a bit bohemian, so that influenced her. And in the comics, Alice said there's a bit, is it canon they say, when they're into vintage clothes. So we got loads more vintage stuff in for her this year. You wanted my opinion, so there it is. Elle's mum, Mariam Argent, is a character in the comics, but we pretty much only see her drive them around and hear that she's into Egyptian cooking since visiting Elle's grandparents there. I gather from that that they're her parents and she's Egyptian too. She's played on the show by Laura Hanna. That boy of yours is here. Was your maths exam okay today? No, Tao. You did not come here just to ask me about my maths exam. You guys are really squished in that doorway. Simona Sushna's favorite shots of episode 2 from her Instagram. Tao and Elle, their two shot of teenage bittersweetness. I guess things have just been kind of weird lately. I, I mean, I've been a bit weird. So I thought I'd come over and see if you wanted to hang out this evening. But I guess you can't. I'm going out tonight with Naomi and Felix. We're going to a club that does under 18 nights. Club? Wow. Wow. I might hate it. We all know she wouldn't. Maybe we could have that art day at the weekend or something. I don't know. Tao. Honestly, I'm kind of busy. Director of photography Simona Sushna on this shot. The calm before the storm, Charlie and Nick before the fight with David, making them feel small in the wide shot, bottom half of the frame, and the peacefulness of being together. Okay, so this is cute, and they watch movies on a laptop like this all the time in the comics. But there's a TV right there they could be using. Unless they're streaming it illegally. In the webcomic version, they're specifically watching Iron Man here, but in the book version, they're enjoying copyright-free footsie snuggles instead. Did I fall asleep? Are you tired? Or is this movie just really boring? I did warn you I'm not a fan of Marvel movies. <laughs> that is so funny because... If you could be on a TV show that isn't part of what would you love to be? I'd love to, like, be in a Disney... something Dis or Marvel, something Marvel would be cool. Of all the Netflix shows, what show do you think your characters would watch? Ooh, that's a good question. Nick's very into sort of like action stuff, mm. sci-fi, superhero stuff. Yeah. So he'd probably watch Umbrella Academy. I think he'd... I think Charlie would like like Stranger Things, or sort of maybe like Elite. Do you want something to eat? Make us some dinner. No, I'll, I'll have something when I get home. I'd have a cup of tea though. <laughs> Hold on, why is that red flag number five though? I hear you ask. Let me show you the previous ones from season one. Well, do you prefer sweet or salted? Or we could get a mix of both. I'm not really hungry, to be honest. You get some, though. I 
I could make us some pizza for dinner. Would that help? I'm not very hungry. I might just eat later. And this is for those people who say Charlie's eating disorder comes out of nowhere. No, it doesn't. It was always there. That you didn't notice is kind of the point. Charlie's family or friends didn't notice. Nick's the only one who did. That's how it often goes in real life. Hiding it is often part of the whole thing, so you don't notice and that's very realistic. Also, Charlie was written for solitary as a side character, Tori's brother, whose main traits were that he was a good person who had an eating disorder and a supportive boyfriend, Nick. In that way, Charlie's story was about his eating disorder journey way before Alice wrote his love story, so yeah, it did not come out of nowhere. Hi. Hi. What was your name? Sorry. I'm Charlie and you're... You're Charlie. David. There he is. Um, I was just getting acquainted with, um, with Charlie. You okay? Yeah. Yeah, I, I just wanted to meet the guy that, you know, that turned my little brother gay. What? I mean, I should have always known you don't have to be gay, really. I must interrupt this serious moment to point out FAMILIAR DONUT! Come on, come on, come on, come on. What? <laughs> okay, I'm almost out of money now. I'm by, actually. And so what? That is an iconic moment. But he does seem more scared here than in the comic. On the show, this posture feels more like self-protection than just defiance. Also, interesting difference here that in the comic version this happens after Charlie's confided in Nick about the bullying. They made that scene heavier in the show, but still extra rough day for them in the comic version. I'm bi actually, so look, if you're gonna be gay, at least admit you're gay. Well, can't claim the heartstopper doesn't have a variety of representation. Now we have a representative for biphobia with all the popular slogans. See, this is exactly why well, I didn't want to tell you! Too late now! Oh, this is ridiculous. Skeptical. No! Your little brother is randomly No, decided. you're not! What? I knew you would be like this! Like what? Like a homophobic prick! Guys, what is going on? I can't unsee that Olivia was definitely not there the day they filmed this scene. The whip pan to her from the stairs is fake. There's definitely a cut hidden in the motion blur. And she actually never interacts with anyone on camera. She's a very, 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 very busy woman. Why did you tell him about Charlie? I didn't, darling! Mum didn't tell me. In the comic, David just blatantly lies that she did before admitting he saw the picture. You left a picture of you two kissing on your bedroom wall. Why do you keep going in my room? Come on, mum, he's saying he's bi. I mean, what a load of absolute bullshit. Quote from Kit Connor. David is homophobic, but the idea he was just born a homophobe or something is just not true. Kit also said that he felt Nick may have been aware of David being jealous of him being the golden boy of the family, and that's why he takes it out on him. But he also pointed out that it's important to remember that Nick is still a teenager and might not have all the answers. David, please don't swear. He, he can't even admit he's gay. I mean, I, I bet you haven't told Dad yet, have you? <laughs> oh my God, imagine what Dad's going to say. Why do you do it? Why are you winding him up? I didn't do anything. It's him who's getting wound up for no reason. All I did was take What did you judge. do? You're going into his bedroom anyway. As much as Sarah Nelson is a dream mother, she was clearly not prepared to handle this conflict. <laughs> <laughs> She's slightly focusing on the wrong issues, most likely because it's easier to scold David for swearing and going into Nick's space uninvited when those seem to be somewhat clear rule violations. She's not saying anything about David's homophobia that we can hear here, and that is a shame. I went in there one time. If he didn't want me to know, then he should, should have gone right. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's fine. The whole time they're just arguing about David going in Nick's room. Director of Photography Simona Sushna on this shot from Instagram. Probably my favourite shot from the whole show where Charlie is so vulnerable. Charlie? 
That's not even called sneaking out. You're just coming and going freely, hoping nobody notices. Come on, Charlie. Where have you been? Next, I assume. I thought we'd agreed that you're going to spend some time apart until you'd finished your coursework. Jane's idea of agreeing. That's not fair. We are not banning you from seeing each other completely. No, it needs to be a complete ban. He was worried about his exams. I just wanted to... Yeah, I don't want to hear it. You are grounded for the rest of this term. A and don't even think about sneaking out or you won't be going on the Paris trip. <sighs> Quote from Joe Locke. In the comics, it's dealt with more, and I don't know if in season three that will be explored further. But Charlie and his mom have an interesting relationship that's very, very classic teenage child and parent. But it was really fun to play a bit of a brat in some of the scenes and arguing with the parents. That was really fun. Does Jane have some cactus obsession or what? Charlie, you want some dinner? No, I ate a Nix. Director of photography Simona Sushna on this shot. Medium shot of Joe's dad, where the blue palette is so wonderful in costume, production design, lighting and the visual reflection of the moment in the story slash character journey. Director of photography Simona Sushna on her cinematography choices. I often frame in big wides with the characters in the center and or bottom half of the frame, or with generous headroom. I also love high angles, particularly for Charlie's bedroom. Quote from DOP Simona Sushna. One of the main tools I wanted to use was composition and how we placed people within the frame. I love center framed compositions or putting people on the edges of the composition or playing with angles that are slightly different. Coming out to my mum was amazing. But there are still awful people in the world. But I can handle it. I promise. They're both trying to protect each other. Nick can't actually promise he will always be able to handle it on its own and Charlie can't take the weight off Nick. I hated taking those pictures. Um, <laughs> it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was fun, and it was, it was, you know, it was silly. But um, I was sort of like, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I didn't realize they were real Instagram accounts, but I'm, you know, ha I'm happy with them. I think they let me swear in one of them. Um, I think I've got two fingers off in one of them, uh, which you know, I'm thrilled with. Yeah, I haven't actually seen the account, so who, who knows. <laughs> I guess it was kind of like Felix isn't miles away from me, but I guess has more energy than me, I guess. Like I'm sort of, I'm 22, but I'm like, oh, what do you mean I have to be out past 11? It's bedtime. Yeah, it was kind of nice to explore someone with that kind of energy and like, let's go and do stuff. Um, and that dynamic with Naomi as well, um, kind of t trying to tone them down a bit, be like, dude, chill. I brought you apple. Thanks. Also, I just realized, Tao's mum brings him apples as a token of love. Tao brings Elle apple juice. Are you sad about Elle? Yeah. Kind of. You remind me of me and dad. What? Mum, that's so weird. <laughs> well, he was the calm one and I was the outspoken one. But when we were in the same room... It was like perfect harmony. And no matter what happened, we both feel okay. So when we lost him, I felt so unbalanced. It was like falling off a cliff. So I understand if you're afraid of losing her. Like I mentioned in my season two predictions video, I figured Tao's abandonment issues most likely come from his dad. Of course, I didn't know for sure he had died, but it makes sense. 
You don't get a complex like Tao has from nothing. It is not uncommon for children to interpret a parent's death as abandonment. This would have led Tao to be hyper aware of the potential of losing people that are important to him because it already happened once. If she's growing up and moving on. Well, I'm stuck here. Same old Tao. Same old Tao isn't so bad. You'd best hear that, all the people who came for my boy in season 1 just because he has issues and funny hair. Surprisingly, it doesn't go well when he tries to change himself to please others. But if you're afraid of losing her, you have to fight to stay by her side. Yeah. Also, Elle's not dead, so there's that. <laughs> I've seen that many people who have lost parents do tend to make morbid jokes about it, so accurate representation again, I guess. Isaac is reading the Oscar Wilde farce classic, The Importance of Being Earnest. It's a humorous drama about mistaken identity, secret engagements and lovers' entanglements from 1895. Oscar Wilde is of course an LGBT icon, so he fits the theme. Also the name of the book goes well with Tao finally being earnest about his feelings in this scene. I like L, okay? I bet you've all been laughing behind my back because I've been so oblivious. More like being exasperated and frustrated, but yeah, kinda. Honestly, Elle can do better. And she probably doesn't even like me back. She liked you first, silly. And this is probably going to destroy our friendship. It's going to destroy our friendship group. So this is a really selfish and stupid thing to do. But I'm going to tell her. Help me. And that's the end of episode 2. Thank you all for leaving so many comments about how excited you were about episode 1. You are all always so lovely and it really makes my day. Also, lovely to see many new subscribers joining in. Welcome! See you next week, unless something goes horribly wrong. <laughs>